you know anything about me, you know that I'm passionate about saying to people that you can live in shalom. God wants you to have shalom. He desires that for us. He's speaking that over our lives. Um, Proverbs 12, 20 says, to the counselors of shalom is joy. And the Holy Spirit gave me that assignment in 2006 or 2007 and let me know I am what he calls a counselor of shalom. The word counselor means to advise, to counsel, of course, but to announce shalom. <laughs> so I'm announcing it. Yeah, and he wants you to have shalom. But there's some prerequisites to shalom. You don't just get it because you want it. That's the start. You got to be. You have a desire for it. But it doesn't just happen. <clears throat> there are some prerequis prerequisites for shalom. When I was in college, um, you know, there were courses I wanted to take, but I couldn't until I took the prerequisites. So if you have a degree from university or college, you know what that's about. Some required things before a certain thing happens or takes place. And the thing that is required for shalom is first righteousness. Psalm chapter 85, verse 8, one of my favorite passages on shalom. I will hear what the Lord God will speak, for he will speak shalom to his people. He's speaking that now. He is Jehovah Shalom. Jesus is the Prince of Shalom. And Jesus is the epitome, the fullness of Christ. In, in Jesus is the exact replica of God and all of his attributes given in his name. In his names, his compound names, Jehovah. He's Jehovah Shalom. Jesus is our Shalom. And thank God we can all come into the righteousness of Jesus. And the only hope we have for that righteousness is Jesus. For God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin for us so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So that's the first step. And then it's submitting to that and walking in that, walking in the righteousness of God that causes us to step into a life of shalom. And shalom is more than peace. It's peace because life is complete. Life is in order. Life is secure. Life is safe. Life is provided for. All those things are in the word, the Hebrew word shalom. And God wants you to have that. He wants us to have that. I, I so long for the people that I love to experience the shalom that God has allowed me to live in and experience. When so many things are seemingly going wrong around us, God just envelops us and hovers down over what, us with what I call a shalom dome. <laughs> My kids make fun of me for saying that. That's okay. Just as long as you live in it, kids. That's all I want. Psalm 85, verse 8. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people. Shalom. But don't let them turn again to folly, the verse finishes. And then, two verses later, it says, Righteousness and peace. Tzedek, the Hebrew word for righteousness, and shalom have kissed each other. Wow. you got to have the prerequisites in order. you got to have the righteousness of Jesus applied to your life. Then you've got to walk in that righteousness and submit to it and have the blood of Jesus cover your sins when we veer from that righteousness as we all do. And that's what sin is. Coming short of the righteousness of God. And then shalom can take place. Yes. Wow. Sweet. Blessed peaceful shalom can happen in our lives as we participate in the righteousness of God. It's interesting what uh, the Bible says, I believe this is in Romans, about the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. There you have righteousness and peace going together. Tzedek and Shalom. Jesus is a type of and after the order of Melchizedek. Now, Melchizedek is a Hebrew word, Melchizedek, two Hebrew words, a Hebrew compound word that means king 
of righteousness. You know what he also was? According to Hebrews, king of Salem, which is the word shalom. The king of righteousness was the king of shalom. Why? The two go hand in hand. They're inseparable scripturally. You cannot separate them biblically. So I encourage you today, if you don't feel like your life is in order the way God wants it to be, if you're still seeking that place of shalom for you, for the, the house you live in, the community you live in, the town, the region you live in, <coughs> first make sure we're aligned with the righteousness of God. The last verse in Psalm 85 says, Righteousness shall go before us and set us in the way of his steps. <laughs> and believe me, his steps lead to shalom because that's who he is. He is Jehovah Shalom. They ain't nothing but shalom taking place around his throne and where he is. He's going to have shalom. So I encourage you to just let Holy Spirit do a checkup on us now to see if first the righteousness of Jesus has been applied to our lives by the blood of Jesus because we've believed on Jesus and received him as our, our Lord and Savior and allowed Holy Spirit to come and live in us. And then by virtue of the fact that we're yielded to the Holy Spirit and walking in the steps of his righteousness, we can step right into and live in that place called Shalom. That city called Salem, again, an English transliteration of the Hebrew word shalom. Shalom to you.